Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I did a benchmark for the 4090 on DCS. I think it's about five or six months now. And since then, Eagle Dynamics have done a big update to the game uh, to improve performance. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can configure the game to run in multi-threaded mode to get the most performance out of it. And also the new native open XR command that you'll want to use to get the most performance in VR2 and then I'll show you some performance benchmarks towards the end of the video so you can see what the difference is and how it compares to what it was like previously when it's single threaded. So before I get going with the benchmarks I'll just quickly run through how you can set this up if you've not run the multi-threaded mode before. I've got the non Steam VR version of DCS and within the DCS world open beta folder there is the existing bin folder, which has the DCS EXE, where the single version of the game, single threaded version of the game, sorry, can still be run from here. And then there's now this new bin hyphen MT, which has the multi-threaded DCS EXE. So this is the one that you'll want to launch uh, to run the game in multi-threaded. And then because we've got access to the single one, we can quickly do an AB comparison between the two modes. So what you want to do is create a shortcut like I've done here so we can add additional start parameters to play this in VR. So I've created one here for the uh, DCS multi-threaded and then you can also see if I open XR on here as well because we're playing it in VR, we want to make use of the new native open XR um, native support. So uh, I've made a video for how to use the open XR toolkit and I cover open XR if you're wondering what that is. So I'll leave a link to that uh, this is a much better way of running DCS now in VR rather than running in Steam VR mode and using Open Composite to translate it to Open XR. It DCS now supports Open XR natively. So the two parameters we'll want to add to the target here. So it's hyphen hyphen force underscore enable underscore VR and then hyphen hyphen force underscore Open XR. I'll put this command line in the description below. And I'll also put links to the uh, the web pages we're about to look at. So in terms of what's been released when, the multi-threading update was actually released on the 10th of March. Um, I've just got around to testing it last week and I was using the build from the 22nd of March. There has actually been a subsequent update. So there may be a further performance improvement, but at the time of doing the benchmarks, I was running this build here yeah, let's zoom in for you, which was 2.8.3.38090. So if we look at the very latest one, there has been multi-threading fix many small and large issues, which brings me on to another point when I upgraded to this version of the build. My previous version was probably about five months old. And when I ran it in the multi-threaded mode, I was getting a lot of crashes. So I had to go through the repair process here, which I'll leave a link to in the description. You basically just go to the DCS updater executable here and then run a couple of commands. So a cleanup command and a uh, repair command here. So if you if you start having crashes and you didn't do before with the new multi-threaded mode, uh, check this out. This might fix your issue. So I'll just quickly run through the DCS multi-threading FAQ page. Uh, I'll leave a link to this in the description below as well. So a lot of this goes through how to launch the game. It actually covers it off for if you're a Steam VR user, and then it just explains what multi-threading is. So just put very simply, multi-threading is a method of running tasks concurrently and usually takes advantage of multi-core processors. So the, the problem we had before is the game was only running on one or two threads and the cores on the CPU were getting maxed out and bottlenecking the 4090. Uh, what should happen now is they've updated the game to run on more cores of your CPU and distribute the load more evenly. Um, so in theory, you should get better in-game performance, less bottlenecking and better use of your hardware. So a couple of things I'll point out is the question here, what is the maximum number of threads the game can utilize? And it mentions here about half of the P cores are dedicated to the graphics needs. So it talks about P cores and E cores which relate to Intel Alder Lake, which is like the 12,000 series and Raptor Lake CPUs, which is the 13,000 series. Um, so they have this big little design where P cores are the performance cores, 
and E cores are the efficiency cores. So a lot of the heavy lifting is usually done on the performance cores and the E cores basically gives you additional extra compute power for background tasks. So it looks like they've updated the game to be um, Alder Lake and Raptor Lake aware in terms of the, the cores that are used. And then the other thing I'll point out is should I enable hyper-threading, simultaneous multi-threading on my motherboard BIOS? So hyper-threading uh, basically lets a typical CPU core run two threads rather than just one thread per core. You can get two with hyper-threading on. And it just says here, users with more than 32 threads should disable hyper-threading, but for everyone else, we recommend they leave it on. So really, if um, you've got a CPU that can run more than 32 threads, only then should you turn hyper-threading off. And this is for people that are running things like Threadripper uh, CPUs or Intel uh, Xenon server-based CPUs. So now that we've been talking about CPUs and cores, I thought I'd quickly mention that I use Process Lasso, but for this benchmark, I've removed any CPU affinity to DCS. So Process Lasso isn't controlling any allocation. If you're wondering what this app is, I've also got a video for this to explain how you can use it and get some performance benefits if you're using the Intel Old Lake or Raptor Lake on Windows 10, uh, which I tend to do. Uh, Windows 11 is a bit better at allocating processes to performance cores and efficiency cores. But anyway, I've turned off any allocation for this benchmark. I've just left it in the bit some high performance mode to avoid any potential core parking. And just for reference, it starts at node zero, which is a performance core and goes all the way up to node 15, which is the last performance core. And then from here onwards to the right, these are all efficiency cores. So when we're looking at the benchmark, we'll be able to see all of these performance cores load up here and any work on the efficiency cores will be to the right here on this section. So the final thing I just wanted to cover off quickly before we get the benchmark going is that DCS now supports OpenXR natively. So uh, as I said earlier, what this means is we can now run the OpenXR toolkit. Uh, so for the last benchmark, I'm using that with foveated rendering enabled. So you'll be able to see the difference between single threaded, multi-threaded and multi-threaded with foveated rendering enabled. And here it just repeats what the command line is we need to use to start it. And the second post here, which is from M. Bachir, I guess I pronounced his name correctly, not sure. He's one of the main authors of the OpenXR toolkit. So this is a real useful post here and it describes which headsets are supported and which mode, why you may want to run the OpenXR mode or run it with Steam and set Steam as the OpenXR mode. For this benchmark, I'm running this on the Reverb G2. Uh, I have tested it on the Quest 2 also, but for this benchmark, it's just on the G2. So for this first benchmark, we've got the A10 on the Persian Gulf map and we're doing some low-level flying to try and get as much GPU utilization as possible and we can see on the left hand side we've got two of the cores on the bottom row so you can see that's where we were getting the, uh, the bottlenecking going there and on, on the right hand side where we've got the multi-threaded version we can see virtually every core is active and a lot of the efficiency cores are actually getting a lot of use there if we look at the uh, the FPS on the right, we're mostly 89 FPS to 90. Uh, so this is using NVIDIA's performance overlay because we're using the OpenXR, uh, native OpenXR mode. We can't use the FPS VR that I used to use in the uh, other videos because that's a Steam VR app. Uh, but what we want to look at is the render latency we want to make sure that's under the 11 milliseconds to lock it in at 90 fps and although we are dipping well actually going over the 11 milliseconds now and again compared to the single threaded version where it's consistently over 11 uh, you can see there's definite improvement using the multi-threaded version of dcs compared to single threaded before and this is on the um, reverb g2 at 90 hertz at native resolution so I'll just let the rest of this um, benchmark play out and then we'll jump over to the F18 
and look at the comparison there on a different map. So we're now in the F-18 on a different map. On the left hand side we've got the single threaded mode DCS in native OpenXR. Then the same again in multi threaded mode. And then on the far right we're using the OpenXR toolkit along with native OpenXR mode. And we've got foveated rendering enabled so you can see in the edges of the far right screen where it goes a bit lower resolution that's giving us a performance boost so from going from left to right we seem to be fluctuating from about 70 fps to 75 the middle one we're in 75 well we're on 85 now and then on the far right where we've got foveated rendering enabled like 88 fps to 90 but again it's the render latency we want to be looking at and making sure that that's under 11 milliseconds where possible in terms of CPU utilization you can see even in the single threaded mode there's virtually no use of the efficiency cores and I'll just let the rest of the F18 benchmark finish off and I'll finish the video there don't forget if you found this video useful leave a like and I'll see you in the next one.